Hi everyone and welcome back to Tanya Jane English. I'm Tanya. Do you ever struggle with different English accents? Today I have a friend joining me with an accent from the Northeast United States. If you want to give this a try and improve your ability to listen, stay with me. All right, let's get started. I'm joined today here with my friend Pat. Hi, Tanya. Hey, Pat. Glad you could join me today. So, Pat, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from Philadelphia. I was born and raised there. Um, I later moved to another part of the state in Pennsylvania. And within the last two years, I have driven across the country and moved to Arizona. Awesome. So, could you give us, if if you weren't from the United States, but you kind of knew the lay of the land, by that I mean you kind of know a few things in the United States, can you kind of tell us where Pennsylvania is? Um, Pennsylvania really is on the far east, um, like Jersey's beside it, and then you hit Pennsylvania. Um, you know, in my youth, you could drive to Jersey and go on the Jersey Beach, um, and Arizona is right beside California, so it's the farthest west practically that you can go. So they're totally different. Yeah, totally different and, and really far from each other. Yes. Okay, so when you say Jersey, what's the total name for Jersey? Oh, Jersey is New Jersey. It's the state of New Jersey. Um, it's known for its beaches. A lot of people go there to vacation in the summer for the United States. I personally have not been there, but I would love to go. I have been to Pennsylvania. I don't know if I had told you that before, but um, oh, okay. beautiful country, totally different than yes. here. So first I'd like to talk just a little bit about the difference between my accent, which would be considered sort of a neutral American accent, okay. and your accent, which maybe somebody would, what might someone call that accent? Um, a lot of people will hear me talk and say, oh, you have a Philly accent, and I say, yes, I do. And so Philly, where does that come from? Philly. Um, Philadelphia. Right. It's Philadelphia. Um, it's, it's just the accent comes from there, where it started or how it came to be, I, I have no idea. But we do say a number of words differently than other people. Um, for example, water. I say water. Which, just to let you know, that's water. Like, I will drink some water. You say it again. Water. 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 <laughs> um, hot dog. Hot dog. That sounds almost the same. Almost the same. Um, crayon. Crayon. <laughs> the thing that I'm saying is the little colored... Uh, Crayola crayons that children use to draw. They're all different colors. And I say crayon and you say crown. <laughs> Which to I know, me it cracks you up. <laughs> to me, <laughs> it does because to me it almost sounds like crown, like a crown on your head. But she's not saying crown, she's saying crayon. Yes. One crown. more time. <laughs> <laughs> Let me okay. know in the comments below what you think about the two different words crayon and crown very good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks okay and then just in general like if i heard pat and i didn't know where she was from i might not know that she's from pennsylvania i might not know that that's a philly accent but i would know that it's from the northeast somewhere just from listening what do you call the little piece of money the coin that's worth 25 cents a quarter Oh, that's pretty much the same. That's, as, that's the same. Say it quarter again. Quarter isn't different. Quarter. Quarter. Quarter, quarter is the yeah, same. Yeah, that's, that's pretty similar. I had another friend from the Northeast that would say quarter. Is that from like somewhere else? Up that north? might be more of a New York accent. Yeah. That's so, a different accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like kind of up in the Northeast, they have at least two or three different accents. Yes, because you can have a Boston accent too. Right. Oh, <laughs> okay. and a Jersey accent. And a Jersey too. accent. Yes. Okay. So, and... Usually here or in the Midwest, we don't refer to New Jersey as Jersey, but all the people I've heard that have lived in the Northeast say Jersey. Is that your experience? Yes. Okay. Very good. So you came to Arizona. What brought you here? Basically, I think the weather was the one thing that I really wanted to move out here for the weather. Um, Pennsylvania can be very 
cold, very damp, very rainy, um, and not a lot of sunshine. So I want more sunshine in my life. Yeah, well, and we've got that. We pretty much have sunshine 365 days a year. So we have sunshine almost every day. We might have two or three cloudy days, but it's very unusual in this part of, of Arizona. Uh, up in the northern part of Arizona, it's a little, little different, but we do have a lot of people from the northern states that come to Arizona either just to visit or to stay. Did you visit here before you decided many to Many times. Many times I had come to visit family in this state and I really like the weather, especially, you know, the fall, the winter. It's, you know, though the fall in Pennsylvania is very, very pretty with the changing of the leaves. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. here just the temperature from like October right through till May is usually really, really nice which is totally true and so then what is the weather here like from like may to october how do you like the summer it's very hot but if you compare it to a winter in pennsylvania you don't have to it may be cold there but you don't have to hear is this if the hotness is my winter then i don't have to shovel snow i don't have to worry about falling on ice um, I don't have to bundle up when I walk out the door, get my mittens, my hat, my scarf. Um, so all of that is eliminated, which is really nice. It's just easier to go out the door. Absolutely. And Pat used a great idiom there, bundle up, and she was uh, great to explain to us what that means. We don't really use that idiom here in the Southwest because it never gets cold enough to bundle up. And what we mean is exactly what she said. If you say, I'm gonna go out in the cold weather, I need to bundle up, I need to put on my coat and my hat and my scarf and my mittens and everything I have that will help me to stay warm. So uh, great use of an idiom there. Okay, so I'm glad to hear the summers have not been too bad for you. A lot of the natives or a lot of the people who have lived here a long time are kind of sick and tired of summer. Another idiom, sick and tired. Uh, when we say sick and tired, we mean, basically we just mean we're tired, but we say sick and tired to give it emphasis. We're not actually sick. We don't actually have a cough or a fever. Mm -hmm. We are just sick and tired. I can be sick and tired of something. I don't want it in my life anymore. So, uh, but a lot of the people who've lived in Arizona here in the Valley for a long time are sick and tired of the hot weather. But like Pat said, we don't have to shovel snow, we don't have to bundle up, and our, our hot weather is very dry, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. The humidity makes it much worse. Much humidity worse. really tires you out, it drains you, whereas you're hot with the heat, but it's not the same. Exactly, I couldn't agree more. So tell me, what are some of the major differences between Pennsylvania and Arizona? So the weather is one, what are some of the other major differences? The roadway system and housing, I would say they're pretty much totally different. Um, Pennsylvania has a lot more smaller roads um, because they were built, you know, maybe 100 or 200 years ago. So the, it was built before there were even cars. So right. there, those roads could be very tiny, like inner city Philadelphia, like Pittsburgh inner city, those areas. Um, whereas here, the roadways are you might have six, eight lanes for a roadway, more so here. Right. Um, so that's a big change. You have to be used to much more high speed driving in Arizona versus in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, things like um, the houses. The houses here are generally very similar where you get a lot more variety in Pennsylvania because you can have houses that are could be 100 years old or, or you know 50 years old, so you get more of, of a span of architecture than you do in, in Arizona. Okay, I never really thought of that, but because the houses were built over more time, you have a lot more differences, a lot more variety. variety. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. And I didn't think of this either, but probably here in Arizona, we have more open space than you do back east. Is that true or no? No, I wouldn't say that because you, you still have a, 
each house generally has more ground than you have here in Arizona. Right. And you still do have a lot of like fields. So you have farming and you have a lot of other things, um, forest. You have a lot more forest and green area and woods. Of, yeah, absolutely. I think you mentioned it briefly, but the changing of the leaves or the in the fall when the leaves change color is spectacular in Pennsylvania. It's, it's incredible. And uh, I did have a friend once, though, tell me there's something in Pennsylvania called mud season. Have you heard of that before? I've never heard of mud season. <laughs> okay, well, this was a friend of mine. I think she lives in upstate New York now, which is like the northern part of New York, right? Yes. She lives in upstate New York now, but this was 30 years ago, and she said in March they have mud season when all the snow melts and everything turns to mud. So maybe you lived in a different part. Well, that happens. It, it does happen, but I've never heard it referred to as mud season. Well, she was a transplant. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> By that, I mean she wasn't from Pennsylvania, and, and Pat is from Pennsylvania, so I would take your word above her. So. Yeah, I've never heard anyone call it that. So <laughs> They might call it flood season more than mud season okay. in reality. Okay, there you go. What are some of your favorite parts about living here in Arizona? The weather would be number one. I have to say I really enjoy the weather. Um, I have some family here that I really enjoy and that I really like. Um, my favorite and part. she has great friends here. Oh, I have absolutely <laughs> fabulous friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, a whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure what the answer is to that. <laughs> well, we'll give you some time to think about it. Okay. So, and another question. If someone had never been to Pennsylvania, there's like the things everybody knows to go see. For instance, the uh, Liberty Bell is in Pennsylvania, right? That's Somewhere. in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. But what are some of the things you would recommend that someone should see if they've never been to Pennsylvania? Even though it's what everybody goes to, I would still go to Philadelphia and see the Liberty Bell, Betsy Ross House, Ben Franklin Museum. Um, I would, you know, try and have a Philly soft pretzel. Um, you know, some of the food in Philly, the pizza's really good. The soft, they're known for their soft pretzels, so definitely if you go have a soft pretzel. Um, but I would also go to some places like Gettysburg. That would be a nice place to go. I would enjoy, you know, I've been to Gettysburg. It's, it's a very historic site, but it's really nice. It's very pretty. Like that would be mm -hmm. a really nice place to go in the spring or the fall. Like you know, that would be really enjoyable. Um, you can't beat Philly though for sightseeing and, and all the different architectures you can see there from really old, a lot of old churches you can see there. Just things like, just to walk around and look is really nice. Something you just said reminded me also of a Philly cheesesteak. Did I say that correct? Yes, you did. Okay, so tell us what a real Philly cheesesteak is like. A real Philly cheesesteak is delicious. Um, it's actually like a shaved steak. It's shaved steak, um, melted cheese, and fried onions. Um, and it's on a really good Italian roll. Oh my gosh, um, sounds it, so good. <laughs> it is delicious. Um, Philadelphia, I think, has some really good bakery goods, rolls in particular. I think it's the water. By that, she means water. That makes the Philly cheesesteak um, the Philly soft pretzel, pizza in Philly, it gives it a little bit of a different flavor and makes a lot of those items very unique to Philadelphia. I, I have actually heard that about New Jersey too. There is actually a place here in Arizona that brings water or has a filter from New Jersey and they make a special okay. pizza here. So it, it, there must be a difference in the water more than just the accent. <laughs> <laughs> True, and I do miss pizza from Pennsylvania. We don't have really good pizza out here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I might argue that we do. <laughs> All right, Pat, thanks for coming today and being a part of my channel. In closing, what is one thing you would tell people who are learning English as a second language to do to improve their English? I would suggest watching some of the American shows. Um, one of my favorites is NCIS, um, but also comedies would really give you a wide range of different words to practice. 
Okay, so what is NCIS? Oh, it's a um, it's a naval show, um, and it's more like a murder mystery show. Okay. But I really do enjoy it. And and are they on Netflix? No, they're actually on CBS. CBS. You might be able to find a recording on YouTube if you can't find it on Netflix or Amazon, something like that. So, all right. So tell us what your favorite show for learning English is. Let us know in the comments below. Let me know how listening to the Philly accent was for you. Was it difficult? Was it easier than you thought? Do you think that you could recognize someone else with the same accent? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss any more Tanya Jane English. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.